It's a stunning day in far north Queensland. And these First Nations women are discovering a new passion. I saw a really cool shell, it was like bright orange. I saw a lizard fish. Oh, yeah. I saw a hidden stingray, some really good new acro that I didn't really know was a thing. They're learning to survey coral reefs. At the moment, we've just been familiarising ourselves with the fish species and the coral species. Oh, no, 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 actually, I saw the tail first. And then... For 22 year old Kailu Sagigi, the work has a special significance. I was born in Thursday Island in the Torres Straits, the north of Queensland. I think it's important that I can spread that information towards my people. So we train them with survey techniques and camera techniques so that they can get geotech images of their reef so that as soon as they send those geotech images back to us, we can be able to identify what's like underneath. The same spot we were yesterday. 29-year-old Naomi Longa is a director of Sea Women of Melanesia. The Sea Women of Melanesia is a program that empowers Indigenous women to take a lead role in setting up marine reserve in their own community. The organisation began in Papua New Guinea in 2018 and won a United Nations Champions of the Earth Award three years later. Coral reef conservation is important because it is our resources back at home. It is one of the main natural resources that people depend on for food, for income, for tourism activity. We'll develop that over the course of next In Australia, they've started a new group, the Sea Women of the Great Barrier Reef. The locals here wanted something similar to happen to their sea country, so we decided to, you know, train the women around this area, so northern Queensland, Torres Strait and PNG women. Over seven weeks, the group are learning new skills to help with conservation. As for the video, remember this one? When you wanna, you see a cool thing, fish, you just like click this one and it starts rolling. Back with Sea Women of Melanesia, I. I am, I'm the field operations person where I train all the other women on doing the camera techniques, the GPS and the skills to do surveying. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think it's great that women can come together and be empowered by each other and actually have something to go back to and take home and, you know, pass it on. Frances Joyce is a Mamu woman and ranger in far north Queensland. I was just like, oh, I've got to do it because I've always had a passion for sea country. For her, protecting the ocean is also about protecting culture. You know, there's hope that we can sustain our reefs and keep them going and look after them for, you know, another 100, 200 years. The Great Barrier Reef where we are today is one of the world's most diverse marine ecosystems. It's home to more than 1,600 different species of fish and almost 500 types of coral. They're obviously facing a lot of threats at the moment, so there's an increasing threat from climate change, um, there's still threats from changes in water quality and different sorts of pollution coming into the ocean. in that whole picture of how we look after reefs, the voice of the First Nations traditional owners is very, very important to be out there and to be heard. Our eventual goal is to have the Sea Women Network spread right around the Coral Sea Arc, from Australia to the Torres Straits, to PNG, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, New Caledonia. So that's the big picture vision. You don't have to go to uni and stuff like that to be able to do this kind of work that you can just give it a go and for me to be able to bring that out of myself is something very special and I can't wait to, you know, show my nieces and get them into it and interested into it. Sea Women GBL, one. <laughs> <laughs>